Right. We live? Okay. Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, haven't posted on this channel in a long time, but definitely, um, definitely a, a favorite channel of mine, even though I haven't posted much. So obviously staying in shape has been a big part of my life, or at least, you know, sports and, and working out and all that. And one of the questions that I get a lot, um, which is totally unrelated to Star Wars or gaming or Cobra Kai or Harry Potter or whatever, um, is in regards to staying in shape, you know, because there are a lot of really skinny guys out there or girls. And there's a lot of really fat guys out there or girls. And they obviously know that I lift. I'm not in amazing shape, but I've obviously done um, something to um, kind of look like I am, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> a little more than average, right? So you guys know that I used to be in powerlifting and strongman and um, I had a lot of friends that were in bodybuilding and I worked in the supplement industry for many, many years. So I've learned a lot through that time. And um, I was super skinny as a kid. And one of the main things for me was to gain weight. So um, eventually, I did that, you know, in high school, I was like, I think in grade eight, uh, as a junior, I think I was like 94 pounds. And then uh, finally, in my senior year, I was like 120 or something. And then eventually, uh, went to powerlifting and just researched and, and kind of used myself as like a guinea pig and just eight and eight and eight and did so many different kinds of routines and workouts and meal plans and stuff like that. And eventually I got to the point where I was about 210 pounds, um, not very lean, but not super fat either. And I, you know, deadlifted 600 pounds, squatted 500 and my bench was like crappy at like 310. But that being said, I've put in my time and I've learned a certain amount. So I'm here today to talk to you guys about something that you ask me a lot about as to how to get in shape or stay in shape and especially during this time is how the question is how, like what am I going to do without a gym pass because gyms aren't open so um, Silas and myself have written up this program and if you don't know Silas he is uh, my buddy on the, the Harry Potter channel and he carries that one really well so we both have stayed in shape he's had a best bench of I think 430 or something 420 and we both have put in our time and uh, completely drug free so we've we've really tried to understand the maximum that you can get from your body um, naturally. So to start, do we have any questions so far? And there's only uh, 17 people in here. Happy you're all here, guys. So to start, um, we have created this program for you guys and uh, it's free. So you can take a screenshot of this. There's nine pages and uh, we're just going to go through pretty much everything. So to start, if you have no equipment, um, we're going to, you know, do a, a routine here for no equipment, basic equipment, outdoor gym equipment, and uh, that's going to be kind of the, the premise, the theme of this whole thing. So, no equipment, time under tension, push-ups. So, this is a harder variation of push-ups, three seconds down, three seconds up. So, I can go through all of this for you guys if you want, or I can just put it on the screen and you guys can figure it out for yourselves. So, I'm just going to go super slow so that you can read it. Okay, so you can take a screenshot of that. There's that. There's that, that, that. So, hope this will be helpful for you guys because I know it's going, uh, it's ramping up quite a bit in the states, so it's definitely an issue when it comes to getting in the gym because the gyms aren't really opening and if they are well be safe be careful you know yeah man take all the screenshots you want dude Just, I'm not gonna try and sell this <laughs> be stupid <laughs> do push-ups there's so many workouts out there man I mean whatever I just want people to um, be fit and get in shape when you know they don't have access to gyms so if you don't have that much um, experience with working out hopefully this will help let's throw the live chat in here yeah man of course anytime will I save the live yeah I could save it sure hey Angelica what's up guys I was going to go, uh, there's no link, so um, it's private. So I guess I could put it um, as public. I could share it. I'll probably put a link then. Yeah. 
I guess. I don't like talking about my weight, but I'm super skinny because of jeans. Yeah, so that was like me too. Um, I was really, really tiny in high school, pretty much my whole life. And eventually I got to the point where um, I did everything under the sun to try and grow, you know, besides steroids. And um, I made a lot of mistakes with like eating and this and that, you know, like I, I thought, oh, the more crap I eat, the you know, more I'll grow and be able to put on weight. It doesn't work like that. So it's really only about calories in versus calories out at the end of the day. Um, if you want to gain weight, you want to make sure that, oh, sorry, I should say, while it's only calories in versus calories out, you want to make sure that the majority of your calories are coming from at least decent things, right? Because then you're, you're substituting your macronutrients or your, your micronutrients for you know, garbage stuff. So you're, if you're having like a, a frozen pizza or something like that, that is not going to be nearly as good as if you have like a nice cooked chicken, uh, chicken breast with um, some basmati rice and uh, maybe some spinach or something like that. So you got to kind of realize like when to do what, right? There's way higher fat content in the pizza, way higher carb content, sugar content, and salt content versus in a, a kind of a home cooked meal sort of thing that would be more quote unquote healthy. Um, there's a huge uh, controversy out there with if it fits your macros, and I did if it fits your macros. Um, I did it for like a year or two, and oh my god, I have never felt more shitty in my entire life, ever. Dude, I'd be having ice cream for breakfast, I'd be having donuts, I'd be having like chocolate. I was just like, oh, calories are calories, it doesn't matter. Sure, and in essence, I mean, you could get lean off of that, but you're gonna feel like absolute shit because of all the hormone um secretions and, and releases that go uh, that are elicited that are released uh from the different things that you eat so if you have a whole shit ton of sugar white sugar table sugar you're going to crash you're gonna feel like absolute ass but if you have let's say i don't know like brown rice or something you're gonna be able to level that off much better and it's you could go just as high and on the glycemic index, but you won't it won't shoot up like that. It'll be more gradual and it'll just kind of like consistently stay there until you, you know, eat something else. But then there are also things you can do to manipulate that kind of stuff, which is like incorporate fat into there. So if you have let's say you have um, something really sugary, if you throw in some fat, it's going to slow that absorption down quite a bit versus if you just had that by itself. Right. So, but then there are certain times where you want to have sugar, you want to have that kind of stuff. Um, it's very, very dire, which would be uh, right after your workout, right? So if you think of your workout, you think your muscles like a sponge, after your workout, they're extremely squished, so nothing in them anymore, and you want to just like flood that as quickly as possible with protein and sugar, mainly sugar, so the glycogen goes in there and you have energy. So, um, I just realized I was looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> I got two set up. <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, that's something that you want to be mindful of. So what I would say is to just cycle your carbs primarily around your workout. It's a very simple way of saying it. How do you donate? Oh, don't worry about donating on this one, man. I can't eat a lot of junk food. I can't eat too much sweet stuff. That's good. Are you diabetic? How often should I lift? Um, it really depends, man. Uh, it depends on what your goals are. So, and it depends how you're lifting. So if you're doing powerlifting, you could get by realistically on three times a week. Uh, I know some of the greats, like the Lily Bridges, they would sometimes just do three times a week because they'd be training so freaking hard on those three days. So I've been trained under Eric Lillybridge. I've been trained under Dan Green. Uh, these are world record power powerlifters. And uh, I was trained uh, in strongman by some greats as well. So I learned a lot of things along the way, um, not just with lifting, but also how my body reacts to food, uh, what kind of food, how much food, when, and this and that. At this point, I'm probably in like pretty shitty shape. But that being said, I haven't been in a gym since maybe February, early March. So I don't look all that bad. But um, definitely trying to make do with what I have. So hopefully this kind of stuff can help you guys out. At the end of the day, it really comes down to your diet. It really comes down. And by diet, I don't mean like restricting your, your food. 
I just mean what you eat. So, any questions? Big fan of your work. I've always wanted to ask you, have you heard of bodybuilder Austin Theory? Because in my opinion, you look exactly the same. What the fuck? No. I prefer things like fruits. Fruits are good. Just uh, sugar in there too. Are you also pumped for the... Uh, yeah, that fight's going to be funny. I don't think you can donate on this channel. No, you can't. This channel is very basic. I, I don't think I've uploaded in like a year. But I was like, you know what? I kind of just want to talk about some stuff. Because I get a lot of questions, especially right now, regarding um, everything that's going on with the world, with COVID and all that. So it's like, what can you do? You know, no one can really work out. And I wish I had better advice when I was a kid on um, how to stay in shape or how to how to gain weight and stuff. Because I just... I was after a different thing. I wasn't after bodybuilding. I was after powerlifting. So I wanted to be as big as I wanted to be, as I could, and strong. And when you're natural and you don't take drugs, it is very hard to do that if you are um, not fat. <laughs> What's the best diet plan for people age 13 to 18? Oh, just eat. Just eat everything. Make sure you have a bit of protein with every meal. Is intermittent fasting good? Intermittent fasting is fine, but um, I just prefer to eat when I'm hungry. So, yeah, yeah, I've tried. I've tried fasting. It, you feel very clear-minded uh, on fasting, but and my energy levels were pretty good, but I felt I couldn't go as long as I wanted to. I couldn't train as long or train as hard as if I was consistently having a decent amount of food in me uh, whenever I got hungry, you know, <laughs> instead of just, look, if you're going to eat, let's say 3000 calories a day, if you're a guy or whatever, you gain weight, um, okay, let's call it 2000. If you're going to eat 2000 calories in a day, we got a day right here, 2000 calories is going to be eaten in this time. I don't really see what the point is if I, if I wait to shove all that 2000 in this period of time or if I just kind of like do it more throughout the day like this I feel like it's much easier on the body I feel like it's just I don't know every person is different and there isn't one certain way to do something there isn't one workout plan one meal plan nothing like that so you really got to be aware that um, every human body is different so you know some people are vegan some people are carnivores <laughs> you know some people are omnivores um, some people are pescatarian or uh, vegetarian whatever it really depends on you and how you feel. I know for me that when I eat red meat, I feel like I can do anything, you know, and I feel like when I don't eat meat, uh, when I go on a vegetarian diet for more than, let's say, even a couple days, I just don't feel good. I, I just, I just don't. It's just something about it for me. Uh, maybe I'm not used to it or whatever it is, but I just, I feel weak, lethargic, bloated, um, just don't feel good. You know, so for me, I know as soon as I have that red meat or I have, which I really only have red meat maybe once a week, as soon as I have some fish or some chicken or something like that, I don't know, my body just responds well to it and I feel different. Do you have any advice on how to choose a personal trainer? Oh, how can you tell who knows what they're talking about versus someone who just wants your money? That's the problem. That's a very big problem. Um, personal trainers are so hit or miss. There are some that are amazing. There are some that are absolute shit. Um, the problem is that you don't know if you don't know much about fitness or, you know, working out and stuff like that. And that's the danger of it. Um, I would go with someone who is very accredited. Um, someone who has a long history of proven work. You got to be very careful with a few things. So if you go to like a commercial gym, you got to be careful who you're hiring there because obviously they want a quota. There are some people that are just very young and just they got a job and they read a book. That book to become a personal trainer is fucking bullshit. It's garbage. It's literally like, it's like being certified to be a CrossFit trainer with which takes like, what does it take like a week or something and then you're telling why there's so many injuries in crossfit because people don't really know what the hell they're doing 
But once you become a, what is it, level three or four or five CrossFit trainer, then you actually really know a lot of shit. You know a ton of really good stuff, and they're very, very... I keep looking at the wrong camera. You Then you know a ton of stuff, and you're very knowledgeable. But in, in, some, in most cases, I'd say. But the thing is, with these trainers, it's tough. And then if you go for a trainer who's on crank... It's like, well, he's got street cred because, you know, he takes juice and he looks really good. So it's like, oh, my God, I want to look like that. But you don't know if they they know what they're doing or if it's just the juice that did that work for them. So there are some people who have worked really hard and they're on juice and they know everything about nutrition, everything about working out. And they are dialed in like mentally and physically. And they are they are the right. Per- they're, they're the best, you know. But then there are people who don't know shit and they just take juice and uh, people just think they know what they're doing. But you just inject like how how much can you fucking know? You don't know anything. So that's the problem with that there. So it's really tough. I would say look at testimonials as much as you can. But those can also be faked. I would say look at uh, their past clients you know, maybe talk to them a little bit. Um, there will be a lot of trainers who will try to get you on steroids. Because it makes them look better, of course, especially for competing or something like that. So you really want to be careful who you choose as a mentor, right? So it's case in point, Star Wars, you know, you you want a Sith Lord as your apprentice. You want a Moron as your apprentice or as as your master. Do you want a Jedi Master as your master? Or, you know, you you can go to Karate Kid. Do you want to be Cobra Kai or do you want to be Miyagi-Do? You know, it's, it's two different philosophies. Both will get you someplace, but... It really depends on who is leading you there, right? Because you don't know. You're blind, right? So. Can I do workouts without weights? Yeah, so this is what this is right here, right? So if you have no equipment, you can do these kind of things. I try to eat a lot of anything with high calories for breaking, um, eat a lot of grains and I have a large dinner but still I'm starving at midnight so I try to have a large bowl of fruit for dessert so fruit's not going to do it so what you need to do is um, I wouldn't worry so much about having something with super high calories and this and that I would just eat more frequently throughout the day so if you feel like you're stuffing your face so this is what I would do. I would stuff my face and then I'd be like so full I wouldn't eat, wouldn't be able to eat. So, But I found if I portioned my meals out a little bit better and then filled in between my meals with like a protein shake or um, maybe a custom protein shake, with like, like half a scoop of protein, um, maybe a little bit of peanut butter, uh, stuff like that. I found I was, then I was really putting on weight properly. Um, the thing that really helped me gain weight was uh, it just worked for me when I was powerlifting, uh, when I properly learned how to eat, was um, rice, white rice with ground beef, uh, a little bit of cheese in there, and um, some veg- some semi- steamed vegetables in there. So you want to be careful with the cheese, of course, and the, the type of ground beef that you get. Um, but typically just like a meat, a, a grain, and some vegetables. You can't go wrong. So... Try looking into um, taking a protein right before bed as well. I would recommend a casein protein. This is made from egg. uh, Sorry, this is made from milk. Um, Just like all of them, but it's from it's a different type of milk. It's the casein, so it 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 digests over an eight-hour period. And if you think of it, it's kind of like a drip method while you sleep. Versus you know, isolate protein is just like chopped up very finely, and it just goes in within 30 minutes. Those are great for right after the workout, um, as they also don't really have any carbs. But a casein protein is a nice protein. You can even do like an egg protein and it'll digest much slower while you sleep and you won't, you won't be as hungry uh, through the night. So your body has something to, to feed on. Maybe I should have a lot of small meals through that. I wouldn't have small meals. I would just have maybe some smaller meals portioned out. So... What I'm trying to say is don't overdo it on just one meal and like engorge and stretch your stomach out and then be, you know become full and you can't eat for several hours. So that mixed with working out an intensive routine, um, preferably with weights, that would actually really bump up your metabolism and it would allow you to eat more. So whatever you're doing, 
just eat more. That's all it is. It's really all it is. You should never really be hungry. You should never really be full. That's kind of how you should feel. Try to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. <laughs> it's hard to do. So far, I've gained two pounds of muscle, but I only lost a very small amount of fat. What is that I might be doing wrong? Um, so unless you're on steroids, it's very difficult to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. You can do it, but it's going to take a long period of time. So if you've already gained about two pounds of muscle or so, and you've lost a pound of fat, um, I don't know how you're getting those calculations, but if that's what you think, then just keep doing what you're doing. And in a year's time, you'll see how much you'll have gained and lost. And it's great. You just need to be patient. You just need to keep doing what you're doing. Consistency is the key here. Diet tips for college students. Yeah, what are you trying to do? Like lose weight? Can you be my dad? <laughs> sure, yeah, I'm your father now. I am your father. A good meal can be salad, chicken, and potatoes with milk as a drink. Yeah, or, I mean, you don't have to have the milk. It makes it a little heavier. Um, salad, chicken, and potatoes is great. That's why they have that expression, meat and potatoes. You know what I mean? How do you stay consistent while in college? You just got to make an effort. <coughs> got to <coughs> make an effort to, um, you know, bring a shake with you. Um, whatever it may be. In class, you have like long classes or something. Take a bar with you, a protein bar. Um, and there's different types of protein bars too. One with just more protein, less carbs. One with more sugar. So you got to gauge really um, your schedule, and you got to make sure every two hours you're eating something if you're trying to gain weight. And if you're trying to lose weight, then just you know push yourself away from the table a little bit. Put the fork down. How do you stay consistent, right? Anyone hyped for Juice World? I want to fight. Again, you need to play on the mind. That's very irrelevant. So, yeah, I'm not going to answer that right here. I asked twice. Thanks. That's not spamming. Yeah, you asked in the wrong place, so I'm not going to answer. Theory, do you think... Yeah, he is spamming. Yeah, stop it. Uh, I dropped 10 pounds of muscle during this crap, during COVID. I'm 14. Used to be 141, now I'm 131. How can I get that weight back? Oh, so you dropped... Oh, shit. Um, honestly, man, if you're not going to a gym, just just follow these routines right here. You, you know, uh, just take screenshots, go back in the stream, and the video will be available afterwards too. So, um, yeah, I mean, do all this stuff. Super easy. Super, super easy. And just make sure you're eating. That's all it is. That's really all it is. Beyond all, I would say more important than working out or anything like that <clears throat> is um, sleep and um, nutrition. That's really it. Sleep and nutrition are numero uno. Supplements, eh, they don't really do anything. Supplements are like the, it's like, it's like you're sanding a piece of, I don't know, wood or something like that. And it really like rounds it out. But it isn't the actual piece of wood. So uh, if anyone's going to try to sell you stuff, I've been in the supplement industry. It's bullshit. Um, but there are some things in there that are actually very beneficial. But at the end of the day, I'd say 99% of it is if you're using it as just, if you're using it in place of actual food, then you're buying into the hype and the bullshit. And they just want to sell, right? Those companies just want to sell crap. So if you use that stuff in place of food, you're an idiot or you're misinformed because I did that. If you're using it in conjunction with food to round out your diet in places where you can't have food all the time or to just, like I said, sand the outside parts of it and make it nice and smooth, then great. Then you're really, really taking advantage of how supplements should be marketed. It's my favorite muscle group to hit. Um, probably legs. Yeah, I used to have really, really good legs, but, uh, dude, honestly, after COVID, I, I look like shit now. Just, like, skinny fat. Which, 
I've been working out for a little over a year now, but I haven't been changing my diet much. Uh, about how much money per month would you spend on food if you're trying to gain weight? Money? Um, obviously, the more money you spend, I usually find you get higher quality stuff, but there is like a breaking point where you're just kind of getting ripped off. You can go the route where you eat everything organic and this and that, but at the end of the day, I think you'll be just as good uh, if you had just like some regular uh, Costco stuff, you know. Um, of course, I would recommend having, you know, higher quality meats, but at the end of the day, you know, you're not going up on stage or anything. You're just doing this for longevity and life and fitness and to look good. So, um you could really get by on, you could probably, honestly, dude, you could probably get by. If you buy in bulk, you could probably get by on like 10 bucks a day, I would say, if you buy in bulk. Yeah. Like, go to Costco, just get like a whole thing of chicken breasts and uh, rice and probably less than 10 bucks a day, honestly. Probably like five or seven, something like that. Canadian. So, that's probably like five dollars. So, yeah. Do I have a favorite exercise? Um, I used to be really good at deadlifts. I haven't done them in a long time. Uh, I've been trying to chase more so fitness. So I've been doing a lot more biking and stuff like that, which is probably why I've like lost a lot of muscle. But um, I'm just trying to get rid of the fat that I gained during COVID, like just eating crap like nachos and, and pizza and all this stuff, chips, you know. Is doing CrossFit good? Uh, I don't like CrossFit unless you have a really good trainer who knows what they're doing. The thing with CrossFit is it's, Literally, it's like, let's see how heavy I can go for the most amount of reps under time. It's like, that is literally a formula for injury. You know, like, I, no, no wonder people just blow their backs out and have so many problems. Um, I'm a really big proponent of lifting properly, not pushing yourself over the limit. Let's say, you know, it's always that one rep where you feel like, okay, you know what? I'm going to save this rep for the next set. I'm going to save it for the next workout. And that's how uh, I've stayed pretty much injury-free, knock on wood, for uh, my entire um, career, if you will, of, of lifting. Like I said, like I got to a 600-pound deadlift, 500-pound squat, and a 310-pound bench, which the bench was garbage. But um, I have tons of lifting videos I could post. Like I had, did a 605-pound yoke walk. I've pulled uh, many semi-trucks. Um, I think it was an 18-wheeler I pulled. For a strongman competition, I've lifted many stones. Uh, it's just really about positioning. It's about knowing how to lift and about bracing your core mainly. So that's a very important thing is to brace your midsection. Um, and a, a lifting belt isn't bad if you know how to do that. So, Who's the buffest Star Wars character? Probably Darth Bane. You watching this video while eating Doritos and drinking root beer? The low back pain push at twist up is my favorite. Um, there's nothing wrong with eating Doritos and drinking root beer, man. Um, if you are very active, and you know what? It's not going to kill you, dude. Like, Man, I, I enjoy my chips and stuff all the time. So, I just had ice cream today. Very energetic because I'm energetic become is my skinny weight i can lift my own weight and feel very healthy but exhausted quick i try to do workouts that increase my chest okay yeah so if you get exhausted quickly then i don't really know exactly what you're doing um maybe just chill out on the reps or uh, lower the weights or something like that and uh you know just longevity is key don't try to get there all in one day you know what i mean What do I think of HIT training? It's really good for losing weight, for losing fat, especially if you don't have much time to work out in your day. Have you participated in any competition? Yeah, so I've done strongman competitions, I've done powerlifting competitions.
And I used to play tennis at a provincial level. Or I guess you'd call it state level. For y'all Americans. What exercise helped you increase strength? Uh, probably my squat. And my deadlift. Probably my deadlift. What time will I be streaming tonight? Probably right after this stream. I'm training in combat sports. Uh, yeah, I did. I did um, kickboxing, uh, karate, um, aikido, boxing, little MMA. That's it. Would I recommend using black coffee instead of pre-workout? Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. The thing with pre-workout is it's a, a lot of caffeine um, and uh, arginine in there. So the arginine or the L-citrulline malate uh, will, sorry, the citrulline malate uh, and L-arginine. So that stuff just helps with blood flow. But the thing is, caffeine is a vasorestrictor, so it shrinks your, it's, it closes, it restricts your veins, so it makes it harder for blood to pass through, but it increases your heart rate, so it pushes blood through there. Um, and then also, the arginine dilates the veins, so it's, it's, they're so, like, one's doing this, and the other one's doing the opposite. So push or pull. Have any tips for increasing deadlift? Most of my maxes are pretty good besides my deadlift. Yeah, I got tons of things. That was my best lift. I really understood it well. And uh, I trained a lot of people to, to to increase their deadlift, and they did, they did well. Do I have a favorite strongman? <coughs> I do, Bill Kazmaier. So I can't eat during the day. I don't want to chance getting sick. I eat a lot of protein, but I can't seem to stop losing weight. I ride every day, typically an hour a day at least. So uh, my parents were actually champion uh, horse jumpers. My mom in dressage and my dad an equestrian in Europe. And... Um, yeah, they. I've never, I've never ridden a horse. I, I think once I've ridden a horse, but it was never like. So, yeah, it was never like properly. <laughs> it was just like galloping around, not even galloping, just walking around. Um. Yeah, so I would say you're just not eating enough. That's all it is. So if you're losing weight, then you're not eating enough. So if you're having protein, that's great. But Lily, I would say um, increase the calories. So bump it up. So have some more potatoes. Have some more. Um, fat in your diet things so uh, calories per gram um, on fat is nine calories on protein and carbs uh, I think what was it three so was it three or four either way it's it's literally like a third of what fat is so you got to be very careful with your fats if you go over on the fats um, it can be very very calorie rich calorie dense so um, that's a good way to definitely help yourself gain some weight if you're you know definitely having the protein in there too so um that's something and fats are very important they're very very good for your brain very good for your skin for your joints and everything so make sure you're having a good amount of fat but the right fats so um if you ever look up um flaxseed oil that's great fish oil that's great make sure you have a lot of those Oh, you do eventing? That's cool. Yeah, I think my dad was number... He came number two in France or something like that. Number one or number two in France. And then, like, they just killed it all through Europe. They were really good. <laughs> they just have boxes and boxes of, like, trophies and medals and just, like... Yeah, I never got into it though. I never, 
Yeah. I, don't know. I think riding horses is different in North America than it is in Europe or in other parts of the world. What can I cook my meal in? Do you recommend olive oil or a non-stick spray? I don't really ni like non-stick sprays. I know a lot of people are cool with them. Um, olive oil also, when you heat it up, something happens to the at the molecular level. I don't really know exactly what, but I just remember it was something not good. So I just use coconut oil. It's great. You eat a lot of calamari. That's not good. It's just fried. And the protein content isn't very high. It's just, it's just f a lot of fat, a lot of, uh, fried fat, which is like the worst. Yeah, Lily, they, they love horses. They were around them their whole lives. It's just sad that they're not around them now, but they were they were really good. I uh, I'll have to make the workout uh public. So, I got to contact Silas and then he can set it up later. I eat breakfast and dinner. I can't eat lunch or really during the day at all because my ADHD medicine. I've been skipping lunch for the last six years at this point. Okay. So do you have to have your ADHD medicine on an empty stomach? So what I would do is before bed, I'd incorporate something new. I'd incorporate a very, very yummy protein shake. So something that it tastes good. Typically, this would be something with a little more carb content in there. So you're going to bed anyways. You don't want it to be absorbing you like really quick, really quickly in your body. So you'd want to have maybe a casein protein, um, egg protein, something like that. Those usually taste pretty good. They're a bit more foamy and a bit more thick, but um, yeah, they're not bad. Or you could just do a regular way or you could do a blend of all of them. Um, and then you can throw things in there that help with the... Um, the slowing down of the absorption. So things like MCT oil, you know, which is a coconut a derivative of coconut oil, which supposedly bypasses your, um, bypasses something and it gets stored in the liver or, or bypasses your liver and just gets stored. I don't know. I, I forgot, but it's good. Um, or you can throw peanut butter in there. Uh, you can throw just some extra fruits for sugar, extra sugar content, whatever you really want. That's the fun part about that. So, you know, uh, um, a great protein shake is a you know protein powder, uh, a banana, some um, some peanut butter, and uh, flax seeds. It's great. Great breakfast. Some fruit and some ice cubes. You're doing 4,000 steps in the morning. Any advice? Um, well, what's your goal? Master Theory, what is your opinion on the keto diet, my mom and I can't go for health problems. Can't go on for health problems. My mom is a type 2 diabetic and my polycystic ovary syndrome has similar diabetic symptoms. So I don't know all that much then in that case since she's diabetic. I would say obviously a doctor would know more, but... My opinion on the keto diet. So keto is basically you just don't have any carbs. So your body goes into a ketogenic state. And um, if you ever notice, like people sometimes like smell like fish. Uh, if they're really, really keto. So if they're like competing in bodybuilding or whatever, um, they go into a ketogenic state. So they only have ketones in their bodies at this point. That elicits kind of like a, a fishy smell in the skin. It's interesting. Um, but you know that they're, they're running on little to no carbs at all so i'm not a fan of keto diet i don't think you need to do that to lose weight um, i think it's a bit too extreme i know there's a lot of science behind it there's a lot of bullshit behind it too because people want to sell ketones and this and that crap um but at the end of the day i really think you would do best on a a diet that revolves your carbs around your workout so um we typically need energy when we work out. So if you want to work out hard and heavy, just have maybe a little bit of your carbs before 
a little bit of carbs after, and you're good for the day. And that's it. Um, if your goal is to really, really lose fat, then of course keto is going to get you there faster, but you're going to be losing a lot of muscle too at the same time. And no one likes that stringy, flat, um, skinny fat look. You know what I mean? So that's something you have to be aware of too. My recommendation is eat normally. Eat when you're hungry. Don't eat when you're not hungry. Um, don't stuff your face. Don't have a lot of fried foods. Don't have a lot of overly fatty foods. Just keep it under a um, a regular diet. And what I mean by that is like, okay, in the morning, have a protein shake and a banana if you want. You know, I would have my, my carbs more so in the earlier parts of the day than in the evening because, you know, you're burning those carbs while you do your, your daily routines, whether it's working out or working or walking or whatever. Um, and then at night, you're more sedentary, so you don't really need all that sugar. You don't need all those carbs to be stored in your muscles. You're just more sedentary. So you would want a higher fat diet in the evening, and the protein can stay the same throughout the day. So that's my view on keto. I think it's it has its place, but... As an overall diet for just like feeling good, it's terrible, man. It's terrible. And I know there are so many keto proponent, like keto uh, people out there who are in love with it, but I'm just not, not, it, not into it. That being said, there are some days where I, I just fast. Like I just don't have breakfast until like later in the day or something like that. Um, or I don't have my first week meal till like six hours after I wake up. It just depends on how I feel that day. I don't really follow like a certain thing. your protein shake do you use water or milk can i use just milk uh use yeah you can use milk that's fine just know you're going to be changing up the protein so if it's an isolate it's now going to digest very slowly because you're throwing milk in there so it's almost like you're having like a casein protein so um be mindful of that i use water just a little bit of water and i just get it down unless it's like i'm mixing it up with stuff but going off of it isn't an option as my ADHD is severe enough to where I'm not functional off of my medicine. Okay. Do you think you're dependent on your medicine now? I take it every morning after I eat breakfast. It's not. I have to uh, I ha I have to have it on an empty stomach. It's it makes not hungry at all. Oh, it makes you not hungry. It makes even the thought of food make me nauseous most days. I see. I don't know then. I would talk to your doctor in that case because there's then there's something that's affecting it, right? Um, in that case, I would go with something more liquid diet. And of course, all of this info is just my opinion. This is not a doctor's opinion. It's not a professional advice. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just a disclaimer, right? Um, I would say in that case, maybe go more of a, a liquid diet. Uh for the plates, places outside the events, outside of actually eating your regular meals. Um, so obviously you say you don't feel like eating because of the medication, but um, there must be something that you do enjoy eating. So the idea of eating is like chewing and this and that, and obviously you don't want to do that. So maybe have a smoothie, you know, um, this sounds gross, but uh, you don't, obviously you're not going to do this. It's just an example. So Derek Poundstone was an elite level power, or, um, um, strong man, and he got so tired of eating because he was always stuffing his face because he had to to grow and recover and and maintain his weight uh, and even gain weight he would liquefy his chicken breasts so he would blend them and you can find videos of that on youtube he would blend his chicken breasts and drink them he would drink chicken breast and he said it was disgusting but it was better than chewing food because he just couldn't get it down so i'm not saying go blend chicken breasts i'm just saying uh Have like a yummy protein shake, you know?
What's the best food to eat for building muscles and losing fat? How much does cardio play a role? Cardio plays a big role. Uh, also, the type of cardio. So long distance, look at long distance sprinters, man. They're all very skinny, uh, very stringy. They're very good for long distance. But and if that's what you want to look like, then, you know, go for that. But I like more of the sprinter's body. They're jacked, dude. They look great. Uh, <laughs> Olympic sprinters are like, they have some of the best bodies ever. So um, I'd go with that, you know. It depends on... I, I like doing short bursts, but also I've been doing a lot of biking because uh, I just really want to like get rid of the excess fat that I've built up. So um, it also comes down to how much time you have to do your cardio. So if you want to do like long periods of cardio at a steady state, that's going to burn fat much, much more effectively than if you just do like a HIT program. But what the HIT program does is it basically burns a certain amount of calories which then you're going to try to take that into effect during the day for what you eat and eat under those calories so you don't hit your um your point where you, you start gaining so if you need only 2,000 calories a day or 1,500 calories a day if you're whatever um you do some hit cardio let's say you burn like 500 calories or 300 whatever 400 calories you obviously would only need then like 1,600 calories for the day to just lose weight um you could even eat 2,000 calories, but you would have done that hit cardio, and it would drop it down to theoretically 1,600. Um, but I think the best form of losing fat is steady state, very, very steady state, long cardio. Bodybuilding or powerlifting? It depends on what you like. Yeah. Now that I've done the powerlifting, I really like bodybuilding. Um, not competing, but I just like doing lower weight for higher reps. I think uh, it's just longevity, man. You know? Why the fuck do I need to deadlift 600 pounds again? Like, I don't. It's just, at the end of the day, it's just a... a why? <laughs> I was so hell-bent on it. I was such a different person. If I can eat during the day, it's typically something like fruit. If I can stomach anything, it's going to be fruit. Okay, you know what? Have a protein shake, throw a bunch of fruit in there, and mix it around. You know, blend it with some ice. Oh, tastes great. What do you eat after you lift? That's a very good question. So after you lift, your muscles are just like a dried sponge, and they need as much energy as they can to recover and grow. Because when you work out, you rip your muscle fibers, and they need to regrow. So... Um, to do this, you want to have, you want to make sure you have sugar after your workout, some sort of carb, um, quickly, uh, one that absorbs quickly. So what I like to, I mean, that's why you see a lot of like post-workout shakes with like maltodextrin or dextrose or this and that. Honestly, man, I would just have a protein shake and put some orange juice in there. It's good enough, really. But then, you know, there are other things. There was this, there was this product called Vitargo. That I used to take, and it was um, it was great. It was it was derived from white potato. It was awesome, man. It was really good, but you don't need that. It was super expensive. You don't need that stuff. Um, there was also another one called Two One One Recovery by Optimum Nutrition. Oh, it, the mango one. I think it was yeah, it was mango, or was it chocolate? It was mango chocolate. I don't know. It was mango. It was it was amazing, and that basically had two one one. So it had. Um, what was it? It had two carbs, like the ratio, two times carbs, one time protein, and it was one time, I think, BCAAs or something like that. Yeah, there wasn't really much fat in there. So that one was great. So just want to make sure you have protein and some sugar. Because after the workout, you have probably exhausted your sugar sores. Fourteen. I've been doing push pull legs at home with dumbbells and barbells. Do you recommend me having things like protein shakes at my age? Yeah, man. Protein shake, all it is, but make sure it's a good quality one. Protein shake is just a substitute for, like, a chicken breast. That's all it is. There's nothing special or magical about it. If you don't have time to eat or cook or whatever, just have a protein shake. That's all it is. Boxing is a good choice if you want to build upper body and it will get you fit. 
try to get a sparring partner and do three men's rounds. You move around a lot and throwing jabs, etc. builds upper body. It's, it's very true. Boxing is numero uno for losing fat, in my opinion, and gaining a nice toned body. Um, you can get to the point where it's a bit counterproductive because you're, you're really, really burning all of the glycogen in your arms. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're eating proper food. You're eating a good amount of food um, if you don't want to lose weight and you want to build muscle. <sighs> Counting calories is great. I don't do it anymore because uh, I hate it. And probably because I did it so much that I can just eyeball stuff now. And I've gotten to the point where I haven't been doing it for years. Um, but if you do count calories, you'll get the best results. And you can't really go wrong. So, But um, that being said, I don't do it. It drives me insane. I just want to live my life and like eat my food and I work out and that's it. And I'll let the, I'll let the mirror be my scale. starting to bench press more weights but i'm not sure what stretching exercises to do for the pecs uh any suggestions yeah um you can just go up against a corner of a wall and just like put put your elbow kind of like if the wall is here you can just put your put your elbow here um and just stretch and that's all you got to do um, that's a good one. You can also lie flat on a bench, take like five pound dumbbells and just kind of, uh, slowly let them down like this and just, uh, let the chest expand and stretch. Intermittent fasting. We spoke about that earlier in the video. Um, I'm, it's okay, but I'm, I don't do it. I did karate when I was younger, so I don't know if that made me skinny worse or... No, man, you're you're probably just young, dude. Like, your metabolism will catch up. Just keep staying in shape and uh, being active, but also eat food. Eat good food. Make sure you have protein with every meal. Don't overdo it on the fat. Don't overdo it on the carbs. But, you know, have a, a good amount, especially when you're young. It's very important. Have your vegetables. Three, how many calories do you typically eat in a day? And what does your diet consist of right now? I don't know how many calories I have in a day right now. <sighs> Maybe, like... Not much, man. Maybe, like, 3,000. 3,500, man. Yeah, something like that. Um... What do I eat? It, I'm not eating. I eat well, but I don't eat um, how I would if I was like training for something. So I'm just kind of eating whatever I want. So I'll wake up and I'll have maybe like three whole eggs. I'll have maybe a piece of turkey bacon uh, cooked in coconut oil, um, and like that'll be it. Or I'll wake up and I won't eat because I just won't feel like it. Or I'll wake up and I'll have like a protein shake with a banana or just a protein shake. Um, it really depends on the day and how I feel. Um, uh, some days I'll have some yogurt with some um, granola. Um, some days just some eggs with uh, a couple berries. Stretch before and after. I would stretch after. So there's actually a lot of science that goes into stretching before you don't want to overdo it on on stretching before because it actually can tear a lot of the fibers before you go in to do the lift and uh, those micro tears can actually turn into major tears um, if you're lifting too heavy and you're not warmed up you're not ready for it so I always like to warm up with the weight I always like to warm up with the bar or you know just with my body weight and stuff like that uh, stretching can be done afterwards in my opinion I didn't say no calamari. You can have calamari. I just... You got to think. If you have calamari, you're going to be full. But what did you put into your body? You put a lot of fat. You put a lot of... Uh, uh, hydrogenized oils. You put a lot of... Um, 
low quality protein like it's just you know like you got to think of a lot of salt uh, whereas if you didn't do that you could have had uh, a nice steak let's say with some rice and some vegetables or um, chicken or whatever and for those who are vegan i don't really know vegan diets very well because i'm not vegan so um i don't know what the substitute would be you would know that better Do you have any workouts? Yeah, you're looking at them. Yeah, let me go to the app section for you. Here you go. I'm not sure if you'll really answer this one, but how many weeks do you think it would take to drop about 5 to 10 pounds of body fat? And any tips for doing so? Um, Every human is different. So everyone, you know, look up ectomorph mesomorph and endomorph those are three different body types ecto meso is what i was so i was in between the two so it's i've always been naturally very skinny and lean and it's very easy for me to put on muscle somewhat now at this point um endo is it's kind of easy for you to put on muscle but it's very 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 easy for you to put on fat and weight um but then on my end it's very hard for me to put on weight as well um, but at this point in my life, because my metabolism has dropped so much and because I kind of, uh, ruined my diet so much with eating so much garbage and shit while I was like trying to learn different things growing up because I was so skinny, um, I've definitely hung on to some, some abdomen fat, which is hard to get rid of. Uh, that's probably the most stubborn area for me. Darth Stormtrooper, I don't see your question. All I see is you asking me to answer it. Have you ever tried calisthenics and bodyweight training? I just started and have... It's just great. Yeah, it's great, man. It's awesome. Really builds that nice muscle, that like Van Damme-looking muscle from the 80s and 90s. Yeah, I'm Ecto. People call me Spider-Man because I've always been good at rock climbing. That's great, you know. Um, carry that with you through life and... Um, Honestly, I'd rather be ecto than when I was a kid. I wanted to be more like mezzo endo, but I'd rather be ecto because it's. Um, I would rather have a hard time gaining weight than have a hard time losing it. It's already hard enough to lose it, so, and I, I consider myself an ecto mezzo. look up in the chat no you can just write it again i'm not going to look up there's it's going a lot of people are asking questions how many times a week do you work out right now nothing i try to work out as much as i can but i don't want to get hurt at the same time uh you can only hurt yourself if you're doing if you're going overboard and you're not you're doing something that you aren't ready for yet so i would really really be careful with the weights that you do how you do them and just progress slowly so don't really like push it i used to be vegetarian my mom thought as long as 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 long as it vegetarian it was healthy so i lacked protein often yeah that's a common misconception so being vegetarian doesn't mean you're you're healthy um, there are many vegetarians who are so deficient in so many vitamins and minerals that um they're actually causing a lot of health complications for themselves so that's something you have to be aware of. If you're a vegetarian, you're going to have to supplement with a lot of vitamins and minerals because there are things that you're just not getting um, or you're not getting enough of, particularly B vitamins. Uh, yeah, I can share the doc in viewer mode for sure. Jiu-Jitsu is great, yeah. Yeah, Darth Stormtrooper, you're not, you're not spamming, man. Um, but it's like when you keep saying, "Can you answer my question?" I'd rather you just ask your question again, because I don't know where it would take me a while to scroll up. What would you suggest me to do if I naturally have muscle, but I want to build a lot more? Um, progressive overload. So let's say one week you go into the gym, you uh, bench press 50 pounds. 
the next week in the gym, go and bench press 55 pounds or 60 pounds. Or, you know, you do 50 pounds for five reps. Next week, go in there, do it for eight reps. Do you recommend any fitness YouTubers besides yourself? <laughs> I'm not a fitness YouTuber. Um, I like Mike Thurston. I like uh, Matt Does Fitness. Um, Matt is a friend of mine. Um... Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. So that's, that's the only ones I'd recommend. The fitness industry is a very, very diluted place. I am an MMA and UFC fan, but I don't watch it. I used to, not much anymore. Darth Stormtrooper, never mind. <laughs> okay. Jesus. Opinion on HIT. Um, I like HIT, man. It was really good. It's really good for burning calories. Um, for burning fat, I would say the best. The best for burning fat, in my opinion, going for um, long walks. Long hikes, partif particularly. Uh, on a nice medium to hard hike or even even just a medium hike um, for like an hour or two Whew, really great yeah even like a bike ride I found I burned the most fat when I did uh, stairs have you watched Joe Delaney and Tom Merrick nope I don't know who they are Every damn day fitness is a good YouTube channel and actual trainer. I've never seen. I just feel bad, so that's why <laughs> Darth Stormtroopers just ask it, man. Jesus. Come on. What workouts would you suggest with dumbbells? Um, so they're all here if you want to take screenshots. Yeah. Man, it depends what you want to do. It's a very loaded question. So if I climb the stairs for one hour, I'm good. That one hour is overkill i'd say i'd say climb the stairs at like um i forgot what level was i on climb the stairs for like half an hour um at a pretty decent pace don't grab the rails don't grab the rails it makes it so much harder if you don't grab the rails you can grab them sometimes if you want but i really would recommend if you want to get good results don't grab the rails at all um, but you gotta be careful because then you can fall. So just make sure you, you pace it well. <laughs> Stop using the lift and start running the emergency stairs. No, of course you know when you know, there's a time to work out and there's a time to not. So I looked like the mountain in my deadlift video. Man was about to get in the arena and crush some. F <laughs> yeah. Um, I was pretty big back then, man. I was, yeah, I was quite large. But he also had a gut, so it's like... Any tips for killing the love handle? Yeah, it's a long process. So, um, drop your carbs a little bit keep your protein up and just uh do some more steady state cardio you know do that for like a year you're good do it three times a week for a year you're great do it uh five times a week for six months you're good five times a week is a little excessive but it'll work you just might burn more protein or, or muscle have you gone anywhere close to 600 since no, I, di I didn't care to. I was just like, eh, whatever. Like, doesn't matter anymore.
What made me want to stream on this channel again? Oh, I just wanted to talk about fitness stuff. That's all. You got a lot of questions regarding it, so. Do you believe lifting when you're young actually stunts your your height? No. I think... I think once you're, you're like, 15, yeah, then you can start using some weights, but very light, uh, wouldn't go crazy, just... A lot of doctors do say that it does stunt your growth, but I mean, I don't think so, but what the hell do I know? You know, I didn't, I started, it's not like I'm tall. I'm 5'10". I started when I was, uh, 18. But before that, I was doing tons of calisthenics, tons of sports, tons of kickboxing, um, push-ups, everything. Hey, good morning. I hacks. You used to be able to run nine miles on average a day, but got injured and lost everything I worked for. Thanks. Um, I would say then just, uh, it depends on the injury. I don't know what the injury is. Then you really got to dial your diet back. So you got to make sure your diet, your diet's on point. Um, consider going for a bike ride. If you can do that, if you can't, um, consider swimming. If you can do that. Is an egg salad sandwich with cheese good for morning? Um, it's very high in fat. Oh, an egg sandwich with cheese. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Egg salad is like high in mayo and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, sure. That, that's okay. Again, it depends um, what your goal is, right? Yeah, I like the stream. So it's not many people here. I've been listening since I was 14, and I've only gotten taller. I'm 15 now. Yeah, man, it doesn't really change anything. What's your favorite form of cardio? Sports. Any sort of sports. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like tennis. I like uh, soccer. I'd say probably boxing. My favorite. Boxing and then biking. Okay, well, I think we're done on this stream. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found some of the, uh, the answers uh, to your benefit, to your liking. hope it helped you answer, uh, answer some of your questions. Um, love to do some more videos like this and add some more content on this channel. So definitely a, a, a big lifestyle of mine is uh, definitely staying in shape as much as I can, even during, especially during this time, but I haven't been doing a good job of that. So thanks for joining the stream. I love you guys.